Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal. We are here in Brooklyn, and we've got two great semifinals for you tonight, beginning with the four seed, Clemson, and the one seed, and the number one team in the nation, by the way, the Virginia Cavaliers with a spot in the championship game on the line. This is the 2018 New York Life ACC Tournament. Yesterday in the quarters, Kyle Guy, sore knee and all, 19 points, four threes, and a lot of smiles as Virginia takes care of Louisville to advance to the semifinal tonight. Meanwhile, in a high-scoring game, Gabe DeVoe with 25 for the Clemson Tigers as they take down the 12-seed Boston College and move into the semis where they will try to pull off an upset tonight. They'll try to beat the best the conference has had this year in Virginia. And how about that matchup in the second game? Round three, North Carolina and Duke. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Brooklyn. Going to be a great night of college basketball. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. You can't talk about Virginia without talking about the defense. Plain and simple, it's the best in the country. We talk about offensive rhythm a lot, but I think this Virginia team gets into a great defensive rhythm. It's a team that plays the pack line defense, and you can see it is really hard to score on this Virginia defense. They only give up 53 points per game. They hold you under 40% from the field and about 30% from three. But the pack line defense, a lot of teams play it, but it is really hard. And it starts with their offense. They do not turn the ball over, and they only send two guys to the offensive glass. Their defensive balance is great. They don't want to give up baskets in transition, so they'll give up the opportunity for some offensive rebounds to keep you from getting easy baskets the other way. And the guy that's guarding the ball, everybody else is in the pack. They're going to shrink the floor and make it really difficult for you to get penetration. They protect the elbow and the block, and they force everybody into the middle. And they do a great job of hedging on ball screens. They're going to stop the ball, they're going to rotate, and they're going to recover. If the ball goes into the post, they want it out of there. Doubling the post, they have active hands, and everybody is moving on the flight of the ball. They call it airtime. It is really difficult to score on Virginia. If you turn it over, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. You just don't get many opportunities at all. They've only lost two games this season. They lost at West Virginia in January, and then they lost at home to Virginia Tech in overtime. Jay, they went 17-1 in the ACC, as tough a conference as there is in the nation. They won the league by four games. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. I mean, this team is a legit number one team, and they're a legit national title favorite, not just a contender. They are a favorite, maybe even the favorite. I don't know what it is, Dan. Maybe they just don't look the part, but they are they are the real thing. Tony Bennett's had an incredible run in Charlottesville. Just a couple of days ago, he was named the Henry Iba National Coach of the Year for the third time. Only one coach has ever won that award more than Tony Bennett, a guy named John Wooden. It's really been a remarkable run. The last uh, hurdle they want to get over is, of course, to get to the Final Four. They've been to one Elite Eight, been to a Sweet 16, have not been to the Final Four, but they've got a great team. They're tough, they're together, everything you want, they have. Going to be a very tough job for Clemson tonight. The Tigers were held to 36 points when they played Virginia in January, but that was their first game without Dante Grantham. They seem to have a better feel for who they are now without Grantham than they did back then. And they've got very good guards. They're older guards that have been there before, guys that can make shots. The problem is finding those shots, and I think it's going to be very important for this Clemson team not to turn the ball over. Every time down, they've got to get a shot and they'll have a chance for an offensive rebound because this is a team with Elijah Thomas that can get some second shots if they go hard to the glass. Allison is with Clemson coach Brad Brownell. Thank you very much. Coach Brownell, when you look at the team in front of you, it's the same guy as you had on January 23rd. Still no Dante Grantham, but how is this group different than the last time you faced Virginia? Yeah, we're a lot different. That was two days after uh, Dante's injury. I think we're more prepared. Amir's playing a lot better. Uh, better leadership from our guards. I think we'll play well tonight. What was your final message to them when you Let's were huddled? go have fun. Enjoy this moment. Brad, thank, you. thank you. Allison, thank you. Enjoy this moment. They've had an enjoyable season. This is the first time in a while that Clemson has made it this far, has made it to the semifinals. The last time that Clemson was in the semis of the ACC tournament was Brad Brownell's first year as head coach back in 2011. This will be their first NCAA berth since the first year of Brownell's tenure as well. We've got Virginia in white. We've got Clemson in orange. We've got Roger Ayers, Bill Covington, and Lee Castle, the officials. And we've got North Carolina and Duke. 
coming up later tonight. We're on ESPN 2 with you now for this game. Carolina and Duke will be on ESPN around about 9.30, depending on the pace of this game. Semifinal number one is underway. If I can tell you, the pace of this game is not going to be that fast. <laughs> Virginia, uh, as everybody who follows them at all knows, they're a very deliberate team offensively. But that doesn't mean they're not a good offensive team. They are an above-average team when it comes to efficiency. They're a really good offensive team. They get the shot that they want just about every time down. And they've got, they don't turn the ball over. But the, the fact that they don't have a lot of possessions in a game isn't necessarily because their offense is all that slow. It's because it's so hard to score on them on the other end. Good guards for Clemson. Marquise Reed, 20 points per game in his three ACC tournament games in his career. And Elijah Thomas, very important on the inside. Kyle Guy knocks down the corner three into Virginia. Off to a good start. You can see the brace on the knee of Guy. Sprained his MCL last weekend, but looked fine in yesterday's game. How quick did he get that shot off? That was remarkable. Thomas, a good look in the paint. It won't go for him. I think Elijah Thomas, if he gets deep post position, can have some success. But they double the post, Virginia. Every time it goes into the post, they want it out of there as quickly as possible. Old Dick Bennett thing, Tony Bennett's dad. He does not like the ball in the post. Long runner for Guy not there. Salt the rebound. And a terrific rebound in traffic for Gabe DeVoe, who had 25 in the win over Boston College yesterday. Boy, they had numbers because Isaiah Wilkins took a spill on the other end, and still they got back and stopped transition. DeVoe buries an early three. The last few weeks, Jay, for DeVoe, he's either had really big nights or really off nights. Obviously, if Clemson's going to win this game, they need a big night from DeVoe. That's his 75th made three on the season, coming off a 25-point game against Boston College in which Clemson scored 90 points. They are not going to score 90 in this one. Jerome down to Salt. Not really a score, more of a screener rebounder. Hall misses the three. Clemson 11-7 in the league on the season in a four-way tie for third. They were the four seed through tiebreakers. Jerome has it rejected by Amir Sims. A great recovery there by Amir Sims. A freshman from the state of Virginia saves a basket there. And Amir Sims has really benefited from the extra playing time that became available when Dante Grantham went down with that season-ending knee injury against Notre Dame. And he's really come on. Amir Sims is going to be a really good player. Good job by Sims there to stay big and get in the way of Kyle Guy on the drive. Shelton Mitchell with the ball for Clemson. And Clemson really has to do a good job of moving the ball and moving themselves. Mitchell step back jumper and the lefty knocks it down to put the Tigers on top. One thing that these Clemson guards can do, they can make shots. Marquise Reed, Gabe DeVoe, Sheldon, uh, Shelton Mitchell, all of them are capable of knocking down perimeter shots and making their, getting their own shot and creating their own. Jerome off the screen. A lot of unselfishness on this Virginia team. They'll use the clock. Everybody gets a touch. Jerome's got deep range. Left that one short, and it's over to Clemson. Well, Virginia runs some really interesting offense. It's a mover-blocker offense where the big guys are screeners, and they can come off and they can curl or fade off those screens, usually at the elbow or down around the block, and it is really difficult to guard. Isaiah Wilkins, you can see, getting a little bit of attention on the Virginia bench. And DeAndre Hunter is into the game. The redshirt freshman from Philadelphia named the sixth man of the year in the ACC this year. Ty Jerome guarding Gabe DeVoe. And Jerome has good size. DeVoe way long on the three. Just a challenge shot. So hard to get open ones. Jerome a sophomore, Guy a sophomore, as we've got a foul away from the ball. Looks like they got Anthony Oliver. And whatever Wilkins was dealing with, they have dealt with, and we'll wait and see if he's back into the game in short order. Hunter remains in the game, and 
Uh, for people who may not be all that familiar with Virginia, DeAndre Hunter, he's a special talent coming off the bench. DeAndre Hunter was the ACC Sixth Man of the Year. He came on coming off a 12-point game against Louisville, and he's got a ton of ability. Can play inside and out. Got a terrific mid-range game. There he is from the baseline. Right on cue. That's the mid-range game. Just any time he gets the ball in triple threat position, he has the ability to take off on you and score. Can put the ball on the deck. I mean, he, he's another guy in this league that is just scratching the surface of how good he is going to be. Can guard one through four. They can switch more when he's in the game. He's the most talented player on this team. I mean, he's, he's an NBA, NBA player. Sims, long jump hook, nifty move. Well, there you can see some of the talent of Amir Sims. He, he can take open threes. He's made 12 of them on the year. In fact, he's got more made three-point field goals than he has free throws. And he's a talker out there. He plays with a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. He is into this game. Salt, again, not looking to shoot. All the drive, and the lefty lays it in with the right hand. Boy, he is such a strong driver. And one thing of the many things that Devin Hall does really well, he's really good with the ball. His shot fake, ball fakes, he can get you off balance without dribbling. Steal by Hunter. And running the floor is Jerome for the easy bucket. One thing Brad Brownell said to us about an hour ago before the game, he said... Uh, if we're going to win, they can't turn it over. You just can't give Virginia, Virginia easy buckets. You have to. It's not just the easy buckets. You have to get a shot every time down. Because if you don't get a shot, you have no shot at an offensive rebound. Two-man game. Reed off to Thomas. Inside. Count it. And a foul. Boy, what a strong move by Elijah Thomas. Went right into the body of Hunter and still finished it. Tied at nine, our first media timeout. When we come back, it's all the rage in Charlottesville. Did Kyle Guy actually dunk yesterday? Cut him a break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. We know that life doesn't fit into any one plan. So start a plan that flexes with yours. Infinity, empower the drive. And Hooters New Smoked Wings. guy went up and he tried to dunk it with two hands. I don't know what happened. He barely dunked it too. I know y'all saw me wide open. His knees messed up. That's not a smart play by him. No, I'm just playing, man. It's, okay. it's talk of the team right now. They're all laughing about it, joking about it. Was it a dunk? Was it not a dunk? Uh, his coach, Tony Bennett, told us before the game, he called it a squeak dunk, as if he just squeaked it over the rim. Kyle Guy says, hey, my fingers were on the rim and the ball went through the basket. That's a dunk. What say you? I don't care so much about the dunk. I'm just disappointed he cut off the man bun. I think when you've got that kind of magnificent hair for, for people who are follically challenged like you and me, that's an affront to us. Yeah. If you've got the ability to grow a man bun, you do. I, I'd have one right now if I could. And by the way, speaking of that, did you see the SEC game today between Alabama and Auburn? I when, saw some of the end, yeah. When Bruce Pearl got into it with the strength coach? After the game, yeah. All right. Never go after the strength coach. <laughs> if you're going to get in an argument after the game in the handshake line, go after the faculty rep or maybe the doctor <laughs> or the trainer. But you never go after you That's never right. go after the strength coach, especially a strength coach with a ponytail. Right. You are just asking to get a beat down. You got no shot. Shot clock at five. Hall, long turnaround, two is there. Boy, what a player. What a player Devin Hall is. You know, he is becoming, you know, I think we've talked about Devin Hall being the most underrated player in the league and maybe one of the most underrated players in the country. He's so underrated that his underratedness is starting to become overrated. <laughs> Second team all ACC, a member of the ACC all defensive team as well. So How some about? folks are noticing him. Did you know ball went into the post, immediate double, and Clemson did everything you're supposed to do. They they passed it opposite, got it into the corner, didn't get a shot and turned the ball over. I mean, that was a great defensive possession by Virginia. Is a it great possession? Is it the scheme? Is it the dedication to following through on the scheme by the players? What is it about this program that has made them so good defensively in recent years? I think it's the players and the way they're taught and the way they commit to it. 
I mean, it's five playing as one out there. There are a number of teams across the country that play the pack line. Nobody plays it anywhere near as well as Virginia. I mean, it's not just scheme. It's it's kind of like the 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 zone of, of Syracuse. You know, a whole bunch of teams play zone. They don't play it as well as Syracuse does. Shelton Mitchell knocks down a three to put Clemson back on top. Virginia allowed an average of 53 points per game this year. Nobody got to 70. They have played 31 games this year. Nobody hit 70 against them all season. And the beauty of it is they don't have ever have to change the nets in John Paul Jones Arena. <laughs> Hall. Mamadi Diakite in off the bench. And it'll go. Well, that's a good move right into the chest of Elijah Thomas. Then it, it actually knocked Diakite back but still finished the play. Diakite's coming on at the offensive end recently for Virginia. Nine, nine, and ten points his last three games. Well, here's the difference. Clemson going one-on-one -on -one in the post, which is one of the most difficult things to guard, but just went right into the chest of Elijah Thomas, and that froze him and then didn't allow him the opportunity to get off the floor to challenge or block that shot. That was really well done by Diakite. Nigel Johnson into the game now, Virginia, number 23 in white, a grad student from Ashburn, Virginia. And he gives them a, a bit of a change of pace. Very quick player as Virginia turns it over. Clemson looking to run, and they'll get the layup from David Skara, the redshirt junior from Croatia by way of Valpo. Really good job defensively. Mark Donnell really did a good job taking away that curl cut by Devin Hall and then the little pocket pass they were able to steal it and that led to the other way and, and defense turning into offense so you don't have to you don't have to grind it out five on five you know this is the kind of start that Clemson wanted to get off to 15 points in eight minutes is a lot against Virginia Brad Brownell's got a, a good team even without Dante Grantham took them a while to find themselves after the season ending injury they've gone seven and five without Grantham this was a second weekend team with Grantham in the lineup. Dante Grantham, one of the most versatile players, a senior. And when he went down against Notre Dame, that could have tubed the whole season. But you're right, Clemson really fought. Isaiah Wilkins working hard inside, but a good defense by Scar to prevent that bucket. Anthony Oliver did a terrific job there as well. Tough shot. And a foul on Jerome will send Reed to the free throw line. A good start tonight for Clemson. Up two, eight and a half in, in the first game of two. Carolina and Duke, a preview when we come back. Coming up in the second semifinal tonight, round three this year between the Duke Blue Devils and the North Carolina Tar Heels, each team winning at home during the regular season. And as my partner likes to say, it always delivers. It'll be fun to do coaching staff from right to left. Nolan Smith, John Shire, Nate James surveying the situation. And the Carolina coaches right there, left to right, Steve Robertson, Hubert Davis, and Hubert's son, Elijah. And Hubert Davis, see the popcorn there. Hubert knows the camera's on him, and he will not eat that popcorn while the camera's on. But as soon as the camera goes off, he is going to dig into that with both hands. <laughs> Well, Elijah got a little TV time yesterday. That was after Theo Pinson's dunk. <laughs> and Elijah was like, did I just see what I think I just saw? That's awesome. That was great. We are looking forward to round three tonight. Carolina won by four in Chapel Hill back in February. Duke returned the favor, winning by ten last weekend at Cameron. And Anthony Oliver on. Kyle Guy right now, he is not really looking to help off. Just all face guarding. Good hands there. Nearly turns it over. Still plenty of time. Paul into Salt. Off the glass, no good. And the rebound down to Donnell. Clemson has been very disciplined on the defensive end. Now this is a real test of your level of concentration throughout the course of 40 minutes. Mitchell scoops it up. English won't help it down. 
Let's go to Allison. Well, guys, Virginia coach is really disappointed with the defense early in this game. I spoke to assistant coach Ron Sanchez. He said, we have to be better defensively, especially on the ball screens. And we know how much their offense helps their defense. He said, we have to take better, more quality shots. It all starts at the defensive end, but to Allison's point, Jay, running good offense can help your defense. That can also help your defense, although now they turn it over. Mitchell pulls up, knocks it down, and Clemson's got a five-point lead. Well, if Clemson doesn't run, excuse me, if Virginia doesn't run good offense and they wind up not making Clemson take the ball out of the net, that makes it more difficult to get back and to get back and stop a team that's got really good guards. Guy missed a wide-open three set up by a big-time screen from Jack Salt, who is one of the game's great screeners. Now Clemson's been in attack mode when they can get the ball up the court. And you're right about Kyle Guy. That was a wide-open shot. He usually does not miss those. Ty Jerome missed a wide-open one earlier in the game. But other than that, Clemson has done a very good job defensively on both Jerome and Guy, making it difficult for them to get open looks. The perimeter players for Virginia, Guy was first team all ACC. Hall was second team all ACC. Jerome was third team all ACC. Then you go to the front court where you've got Wilkins, the defensive player of the year in the conference. And off the bench, you've got Hunter, the sixth man of the year in the conference. So this is a team that gets help from a lot of different places. Kids today, everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> I guess when you're 17 and one, everybody should yeah. get a throw. That's phenomenal. It is. First time that a team has won the league by four games since Duke did it in 1999-2000. Virginia went 17 and one. Duke this year 13 and five. You know the help and the positioning for Virginia has not been good. I mean, you're seeing Clemson get to the basket without being deterred and it's not just the the guy guarding the ball he's not getting any help and it's been one and out for virginia and they are cold at the offensive end they're shooting 30 percent right now clemson's at 61 percent well, that's a great screen there by donnell wide open shot from marquise reed just missed it but that was a good idea to go ahead and screen the rotating defender jack salt one thing you'll notice about virginia games the pace may be slow in terms of possessions, but the clock runs. There aren't many fouls. There aren't many whistles. And all of a sudden, you look up, and you're at the next four-minute media timeout. The game really moves. Yeah, it's amazing when you don't foul <laughs> how quick the game goes. Yep. Right now, Clemson shooting the ball well, executing well. And they've got a seven-point lead on the number one team in the nation. And a lock you would think to be a number one seed no matter what happens tonight or tomorrow. Over the back, Scar. Well, Gabe DeVoe on this drive is able to get all the way to the basket. Little ball screen action, then ball reversal, and just sort of faked a screen there. And if Jack Salt stays with the ball, he could have thrown it back on a pick and pop to Mark Donnell, but that's just awfully easy for Gabe DeVoe, or at least it looks easy relative to how difficult this Virginia defense is to score upon. Heck, this is an offensive explosion for uh, yep. for Clemson compared to how difficult it was the last time these two teams played. They only scored 36 the last time they played. Again, that was the first game without Grantham, so they were still adjusting to his absence. Johnson steps in, misses a 16-footer, and the loose ball to the Tigers. Mitchell into traffic, couldn't get it over the rim. Well, he didn't make it, but aggressive. He went basically one on three. But you have to like the way Clemson is attacking. They are not getting sucked into Virginia's pace. Diakite having a nice night. Makes it a five-point game. Well, usually it is the guards that you're really worried about and you have to continue to stay with Jerome stay with Guy but Diakite has gotten off to a really nice start first points in five minutes for the Cavs five point lead Clemson Clemson looking to slip those screens right away that's a there's a slip on a pick and pop by Donnell and a slip to the basket Reed timeout on the floor 
The four seed, the Clemson Tigers, with an early lead on the top team in the nation, the Virginia Cavaliers. Clemson trying to pull off an upset and move on to the championship game. You know, some of us at ESPN are pampered superstars that have to have a limo pick us up and take us all the way to the arena like Dan Schulman. But some of us take the subway. <laughs> we are men of the people. Yeah. You know, we like to interact with New Yorkers and enjoy our time here rather than being pampered and carried around. Meeting, <laughs> meeting New Yorkers that are coming to the game and enjoying, enjoying oneself by taking the subway from Fulton Street all the way to Atlantic and coming to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Now, I know I'm going to lose this one, but I tweeted out a picture of the subway, but as you said, I didn't put myself in it. Allison, it doesn't, hey, it doesn't yeah. count when your assistant <laughs> takes the picture and you get in the limo anyway and come over the Brooklyn Bridge. I took the subway four times today and did not feel the need to take a selfie and brag about it, just so you guys know. Allison, do you believe me that I took the subway? Yes, I Thank absolutely do. Thank you. All right, Allison and Dan, how did you get to the arena yesterday? In an Uber. Okay. You took an Uber? Yeah. All right, that's almost man of the people. <laughs> Phyllis, you try and get through a subway in heels. It's not yeah. easy. <laughs> Can he dunk it? Yes! Guy with his second dunk in as many games. That's a dunk. He just said, that's a dunk. All right, that counts. <laughs> that counts. I think everybody now is satisfied that Kyle Guy can dunk, except for Brad Brownell, who called the timeout. There is no squeak in this dunk. <laughs> this was, let's get the above the rim camera out to show that one Kyle Guy, late of the man bun, can get over the rim. This is a dunk, no squeaking at all. Rim grab. That's a uh, dunk. Back here in Brooklyn, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Allison Williams, semifinal number one at the ACC tournament. And the number one team of the nation of Virginia has come back to tie Clemson at 20, less than six minutes to go in the half. And now a Clemson turnover, numbers for Virginia. Great fake. Elijah Thomas protesting the call, but gets called for the foul. Well, it looked like a lot of ball up top. But anytime someone hits the deck, it could very, very well be some body. We we're shielded out a little bit. That's a fantastic shot bank. Ooh. That was an awful lot of ball there. Uh, a little bit of arm. Had to get a little bit of arm there, too. And it's a big foul because it's the second on Thomas, who, of course, is their key inside player. Wow, that was a lot of ball. But a heck of a fake by DeAndre Hunter. He's yeah. got, what a player. An, an interesting story. Like a lot of guys in the Virginia program, he redshirted. Uh, he's a redshirt freshman, and now, in his first real year of playing, I mean, he's had to wait his turn, play behind other guys, learn in practice, come off the bench. But this is the way it's gone for a number of guys for Virginia. You redshirt early, you wait your turn, and then when a Parentis or an Anderson or a Brogdon, when they move on, you get a larger role, and it's not a team. It's a program. It's a culture. It's a bird. It's a plane. <laughs> But as Tony Bennett said it was before the game, we asked him, you know, what, what traits are you looking for when you recruit people? He said, I want them to be underdog. I have an underdog mentality, and they've got to be unselfish. They've got to be good team players. Shot clock a factor. Reed gets it off. See, what a difference, not only in the intensity level of Virginia defensively, five playing as one, but the ball for, Cle uh, for Clemson not moving. There was more dribbling, more guys trying to go. And you're not going to go one on one against Virginia. You're going to go one on five, and so you better you better move that ball because you have no chance otherwise. Hunter with a nice move from the elbow down to the baseline, and he banks it home. Looking to a two-man game on the left side of the floor. They just got it back to the elbow and isolated Hunter where he could drive it gets to that right hand and he has got a ton of ability a great help and recover there by Hunter on the drive let's bring in Allison well to Jay's point about Clemson needing to move the ball Brad Brown out had just told his guys the best thing we can do is keep moving the ball fast to create space a couple things on the defensive end as well he said you've been fantastic 
stick walling up. You've been great getting in the gap on back screens, but you have to make sure your weak side defense gets into the paint so you can keep the ball out of the middle. And right now they're struggling at the offensive end, as so many teams do against Virginia. You could hear Brad Bronell yelling twice right there, stop dribbling. He wants more passing and less dribbling against Virginia. Well, you're not going to dribble your way out of trouble, yeah. and Martinell against other teams might be able to put the ball on the deck from the deep corner and get all the way to the basket, but that's not going to happen against Virginia. If he had just pulled up and shot it off the glass, he would have had an opportunity, but you know, they come over, they're going to take a charge. There, there is no way you're going to be able to drive all the way. That's nothing against Mark Donnell. It's right. just, it's anybody on this team. You're not going to be able to take two dribbles to get all the way to the bucket without them coming over and cutting you off. And the Virginia players feed off the frustration they can sense at times in other teams when they're when the Virginia defense really starts exerting its influence on the game. They can see it, they can feel it, and they may not do it in the first 10, 20, even 30 minutes, but they feel that over 40 minutes, they're going to wear you out mentally and physically. Well, basketball is about rhythm. It's about establishing yours and disrupting theirs. And this team disrupts rhythm better than anyone else I've seen. It's really remarkable. Two-point lead, Virginia, late first half. Semifinal number one still to come. Carolina and Duke. The senior, Grayson Allen, in the house along with the Blue Devils for round three coming up later tonight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Protect your family no matter what. Well, it's champ week. There's action going on all over the place, as you know. And tonight, the quarterfinal round of the SEC men's basketball tournament continues on the SEC Network. Florida and Kansas a little bit later. Tennessee, Mississippi State going on now. How about Colin Sexton? The game he had 31 to lead the Tide over Auburn. They get Kentucky in the next game. Nice game for Shea Gilgis Alexander to get the Wildcats into the semis. You'll hear all about it and more with Reese, Seth, and Jay on the Audi Halftime Report. What do they have for us? Coach, what do you got for well, us tonight? we're documenting Bills' career. Unfortunately, Coach K said stay on the bench, Bills. But 1,062 points is pretty good. Unfortunately, Jay Will in three years scored 2,079. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little difference there. That's why my dad Jay Will's up here. And Bills, you're calling the game. Were those his Reece points? Reese doesn't or... want any part of this, by the way. <laughs> were those points scored or shots taken? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Guys coming up with the Audi Halftime Report, they'll they'll talk about number one seeds. We've talked so much about bubble teams, who's in and who's out. They'll talk a little bit about Xavier and Kansas. Kansas playing Kansas State tonight. We've got Duke and Carolina coming up in our second game tonight. Let's talk about the Blue Devils, who have a higher ranking right now than Carolina. If Duke wins the ACC tournament, is the number one seed in play for them? Depends on what Kansas does. If Kansas wins the Big 12 because of their number of quad one wins, they probably wind up. Uh, getting a number one seed, but one, two. I mean, if you're if you're the top number two seed, you know, it's, they, they'll wind up putting you usually in the same bracket as the last number one. And, and you would say, without question, Virginia's a one seed, even if they lose this game tonight, right? Virginia can lose any game yeah. the rest of the way, and they're a one yeah. seed given what they've accomplished in the regular season. Twenty-nine and two baseline jumper for Ty Jerome. Or Ty Jerome has game. Leads this team in assists. He's got a great feel. A deep range, and with his size, he can shoot over smaller guards. But Marquise Reed is being guarded by Devin Hall right now. He's got to, he's got to get, uh, get going. High arcing three not there for Amir Sims. Clemson's gone about six and a half minutes since they last scored a point. When was the last time they got an easy shot? You know, Marquise Reed right now, 0 of 5 from the field, 0 of 4 from 3. Good nice. pass. And Wilkins with a great little hesitation move to extend the lead. Now, when you don't score, when Clemson can't score, it really starts to affect your defense after a while. It's hard to pitch shutouts. Two minutes left in the half. It's been an eternity since Clemson made a bucket. Sims running hook, not there. All these shots are really tough shots. And Virginia is a team, they want to keep you out of the paint, but they're going to influence you to the middle, into the pack, into help. What they don't want you to do is drive the ball baseline because there's no help for that. Guy off the screen. That 
is Kyle Guy to a T right there. Oh, his shot preparation just so good. Moves so well without the ball, and he is setting his feet as he's turning. And by the time he rises up, he's got all ten toes pointing at the rim. And his follow-through is spectacular. Kyle Guy never stops moving. And look, look at that form, and that's off a dead run. That's great shot preparation. And he's got a little bit, he's got a little bit of competitor in him, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. But he's not the only guy getting it done, no pun intended, for Virginia tonight. Ty Jerome, as you said, he's got game, and the unheralded guy on the team, known much more for his defense, Isaiah Wilkins laying it in. Well, you got caught looking at the ball, and Jerome whistles one right past the ear of Scara. That was a beautiful step-back move that Ty Jerome had on the baseline. 16-0 run to Virginia. Still to come tonight, the second semifinal, Duke in North Carolina from Brooklyn. How about the night that Marvin Bagley III had last night against Notre Dame? How do you like the sound of 33 points and 17 rebounds? And at times, and this is a credit to his talent, at times, and you said it last night, didn't look like he was breaking a sweat doing it. It's remarkable how smooth he is and athletic. 17 rebounds in an ACC tournament game as a freshman. Only one freshman has had more. Ralph Sampson <laughs> had 18. Pretty good. Been a lot of great freshmen in this league. An unusual happening with Virginia fouling a jump shooter. Guy fouls Mitchell. Just closing out. Oh, there wasn't much there. He, he, he caught him up. He caught his hand. He definitely fouled him, but there was really no need for Mitchell to fall there. First point in eight minutes and 25 seconds for Clemson. They hung tough with Virginia in Charlottesville in the game back in January. The final score was 61-36, but it was close for about eight minutes into the second half. And then it got away from the Tigers a little bit. Brad, uh, Brad Brownell played some of his freshmen near the end of the game when it was a bit out of hand. And they led this game 20 to 13 before Virginia went on a 16-0 run. Clemson answering just now with three free throws. There's a big defensive possession going into halftime for Clemson. Can they get a stop and a score? You got DeVoe guarding Hall. There's a switch. Guy could drive this if he wants to. Handoff from Wilkins. Wow. Another three for Kyle Guy. That is one quick release. And it effectively works as a two for one. Guy had 19 last night, four threes. He's got three threes and 11 already denied, and the Virginia fans are loving it. A deep one for Reed. And Virginia's got time. Jerome will save it. They've still got time. Gets it off. And the first half comes to a close with Virginia having trailed by as many as seven. But they will take a nine-point lead into the locker room on the strength of a 19-3 run to close out the half. Vintage Virginia in the last ten minutes. Looking to advance onto the championship game. They're up by nine at the break. And Allison Williams is with Virginia coach Tony Bennett. Coach Bennett, I know you weren't pleased with your defense to start. What improved as the game went on and you were able to hold them nine minutes without a field goal? Well, they were really getting down the floor on us and denting us, taking it at us. And I didn't think we were tough on our defense. We started getting some stops, contesting better. It was a poor foul at the end. We shouldn't have done that. But we got some stops. Obviously, Kyle hit a tough, couple of tough shots. but. They were really aggressive, and we got to try to keep them out of the paint. How is Isaiah Wilkins doing with that knee? I know we banged it early in the game. He's got a sleeve on it. Is there any concern there? We'll find out at halftime. Okay. Thank you, Tony.
All right, Allison, thank you. A nine-point lead for Tony Bennett's Virginia Cavaliers up nine on Clemson. Time now to head to the guys for the halftime report. Let's see what they're thinking with Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams. Here's Reese Davis. No Wi-Fi, no magazines, <laughs> and you're going to get a root canal as soon as you get out of the waiting room. It's so frustrating. Check your Twitter feed, your notifications for all the dentists who are now tweeting back at you. <laughs> they, they know. My father included. They do it on purpose. <laughs> Nine-point lead for Virginia. Just about two minutes in to the second half here in Brooklyn. The Cavaliers won the ACC tournament back in 2014. They've won it twice. This is the third time in five years they have been the number one seed going into the ACC tournament. Think about that. Got to get some movement when the ball goes into the post. And Salt called for the foul. Don't forget to check out our alternate angle of tonight's game, the New York Life Above the Rim Cam, streaming live on the ESPN app. With the New York Life Above the Rim Cam, you can see Kyle Guy soaring in for his dunk. I just love that in the moment, because of the disputed nature of yesterday's dunk, that he, as he's getting back on D, he's turning to his buddies on the bench and saying, now that was a dunk. There could be no disputing that one. That's the game within the game. <laughs> he's a really good player and a really confident player. Got that brace on his left knee. Sprained the MCL uh, last weekend of the game against Notre Dame. But, I mean, he's got his first two dunks of his career since he put the brace on. Well, he's a 14-point-per-game scorer for Virginia. And if he played in a more up-tempo offense, he's a 20-point-a-game scorer. He never stops moving. And he's such a threat every time he comes off the screen. That's why when he comes off the screen, his shot fake, ball fake is so good. Because, you know, he's coming off ready to fire. Jerome off balance. Doesn't get the bounce. And Thomas down with a rebound. What good outlet. And Marquise Reed has to get going. He cannot have a goose egg in this game and had Clemson have a chance to win. And Thomas driving is fouled again. And that's the second on Salt, both of them in the last minute. So Tony Bennett's going to make an early substitution and bring in Amadi Diakite, who gave him some good minutes off the bench in the first half. But Ty Jerome getting right underneath Gabe DeVoe. DeVoe was down on his knees and Jerome just went right underneath them. Now Roger Ayer's doing a nice job getting those two to lay off each other. You know, Brad Brownell talked before the game about what this means to somebody like Gabe DeVoe, a senior who's been through some ups and downs with the program the last few years. They were out of their building last year because uh, of renovations at Little John. But now in DeVoe's senior season for Clemson to put together the kind of year that they have, go 11-7 and seven in the league, play in the semis in the ACC tournament, know they're going to the NCAA tournament. Means a lot for DeVoe, but at the same time, Brownell's thinking about Dante Grantham and the fact that he's not able to experience all this right now. Well, it's difficult, and what's really impressive is after you have an injury as difficult as, as Dante Grantham's injury for any team, you lose really what was Clemson's best player and certainly most versatile player. They continue to fight, and they wound up finishing fourth in the league. You know, 11 and 7 yeah. is a, in this league, is a, is a tremendous accomplishment, especially with that young man, Dante Grantham, out since the Notre Dame game. They were picked preseason, for what it's worth, to finish 13th in the league, and they finished 4th. Virginia, again, for what it's worth, they were picked 6th in the league. Virginia was not ranked at the beginning of the season, and here they are, the unanimous number one team in the nation, according to the AP poll, at this point of the season. Thomas is getting some work done underneath right now for the Tigers. When you take good shots, the misses will be around the basket. And that's where you have an opportunity. The one opportunity I think you have to beat this Virginia team is if you can offensive rebound. Getting second chance opportunities, that's why in the tournament, if Virginia, and they're not going to do it early in the tournament, it's going to be in an Elite Eight type game. If they play a team like Michigan State uh, that can rebound, that's where they can have a difficult time. Everybody else, I don't know how you're going to beat them. The junior from Dallas knocks down the free throw, and Clemson's got it from nine down to four. And 
One of the reasons is Virginia has not run good offense the last few possessions. Turned the ball over, took some challenge shots, almost turned it over there. Very fortunate to get away with that pass. DeVoe on Guy coming off the baseline screen. Guy drops it off, and Diakite makes it happen. How much has Mamadi Diakite improved from last year to this? And that was not a, a move he would have finished with such ease last year. Good help by Isaiah Wilkins. Good ball movement by Clemson, but then Thomas couldn't pick up the pass and gets called for the foul. That was unbelievable. The rotation and then Wilkins coming from all the way on the wing to get under the basket to stop that play. Great rotation by Diakite and then a great recovery by Wilkins. That's the way Virginia guards you for 40. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Protect your family no matter what. And Papa John's. Two medium, two topping pizzas, just $5.99 each. The 248th meeting all time between North Carolina and Duke. The 22nd meeting between the two programs of the ACC tournament where Duke has won the last six. The last time the North Carolina won, they won the championship way back in 1998. Duke beat Carolina in the semis last year on their way to winning the ACC tournament. They will meet next after this one in semifinal number two. Virginia is capable of running far better offense than they have. Part of it's Clemson's defense, but what a great spin move down low by Diakite. That's big time. It is hard to make that move without walking. And he just pivoted off that left foot and blew by on the baseline. That's a big time move by Mabadi Diakite. And when they could bring guys like Diakite and Hunter off the bench, they, they might have a couple more weapons than they've had in some of their prior years, as amazing as they were. Good defense, Guy the steal, Diakite again. I wonder why Guy didn't keep that and dunk it himself. <laughs> didn't want to get greedy. <laughs> He's reached his quota for tonight. Well, I'll tell you one thing, when you are in any kind of double team situation you are not going to dribble through it and that was mis the mistake Clemson just made and the lead grows to 10 after Clemson had gotten it down to four like Devin Hall is doing a great job on Marquise Reed Reed has been a non-factor offensively for Clemson and a guy who could be a big time scorer for the Tigers he's a, an outstanding player Fourth shot at the end of the shot clock. That's something you see often when Virginia is playing their best D. Well, that's on Marquise Reed because he's a little bit frustrated right now. He gave that ball up toward the end of the clock. And what he should have done was keep that so he could make a play. Jerome with a drive. And the loose ball to Clemson. Another steal. Oh, what a move by Jerome. Back to Guy. Foot on the line. It's a long two for Kyle Guy. But Virginia's defense is turning into offense. Did you see that crossover by Ty Jerome? That ball's on a string for the sophomore from New Rochelle. You know, you know what's in New Rochelle? What? Iona. That's right. About 25 miles north of here. as he is making the turn to make the catch. And if you don't switch out right away, if you're going to switch, he's going to shoot right behind that handoff and gets it off incredibly quickly. 13 points in this game for Kyle Guy in a game without a lot of possessions. Three of six from three, five of ten overall. And on catch and shoot, that's a pretty darn good percentage, four out of seven. First team, all ACC. Guy comes up with it again. Numbers for Virginia. And Guy's going to do it himself. The double team as the ball went in the post. And Devin Hall right there to knock the ball away. You know, this pack line defense is totally alert to what's going on. All five guys play as one. It's like they're on a string. You know, they move as the ball moves. 
Clemson has turned it over on four of their last six possessions now after that missed jumper. And Virginia has taken advantage in transition at the other end. You know, Virginia's got outstanding players. They, they don't have, like, the superior athletes. I mean, DeAndre Hunter, Diakite, those guys are great. They're all really good athletes. But it's not like they've got the, uh, uh, if, if, they, if it was baseball, they don't throw 95-mile-an-hour fastballs. They're, they're like uh, Greg Maddox. Right. You know, they, they find locations. They, uh, they change speeds. They keep you off balance. There's the double team. Devin Hall knocks it away. Kyle Guy takes it the other way. And that's how you turn defense into offense. But it's so frustrating that double team comes right, you throw it out, you think you got an opening, and Devin Hall closes that thing down. It's continuous defense for 30 seconds, and they never seem to get tired of playing it. You know, they don't get bored with doing something really well. As good as they've been in recent years under Tony Bennett, they haven't gotten to the Final Four. But in your mind, is this team fully capable of getting to a Final Four and potentially cutting down the nets? Yeah, I think they're a, they're a national championship favorite. Doesn't mean they're the favorite, but they're a favorite. And I, I think in 2016, they, they, were, they were a Final Four team. They should have made it. I mean, they kind of melted down against Syracuse's pressure in the second half when they had the game essentially won, and they didn't finish on the back end of Syracuse's press. Devin Hall, no, and the rebound down to DeVoe. You look at some of the players they've had. I mean, Malcolm Brockton won Rookie of the Year in the NBA. Justin Anderson in the NBA. Joe Harris, London Parentis. They've had some players who may not have come into college with huge hype, but they've gone on to some very good things after great careers in Charlottesville. Virginia, the number one team in the nation with a 12-point lead on Clemson. Now the pesky Friars putting up a battle with Xavier tonight. Speaking of the Big 12 Championship, the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Semifinal action continues tonight. West Virginia, Texas Tech coming up a little bit later on ESPN2. And the championship game from Kansas City tomorrow evening, 6 Eastern, right in front of our championship game from Brooklyn, which is 8.30 Eastern tomorrow night. In a year where we say anybody can win in the Big 12, it's been all chalk. One, two, three, four in the semis. Here in the ACC, three of the four top seeds advance to the semis, but it's kind of an asterisk because three through six in the ACC all had exactly the same record. They were separated only on the basis of tiebreakers. Number six, Carolina, beating number three, Miami, last night. Who would advance to take on Duke in our next semifinal here tonight. Well, Virginia getting all the way down to the end of the clock, and now Clemson's got to play 30 more seconds of defense as North Carolina goes down the hallway to stretch here at the Barclays Center. Joel Berry and especially Luke May. Well, Luke May went one for 15. A, you know, incredibly unusual night for a guy who's had an incredible year. Joel Berry has struggled shooting the ball his last three games, but still Carolina, Theo Pinson leading the way. Carolina scored 82 points last night to run away from Miami in the closing minutes. Well, Virginia there with just the fifth turnover of the game for the Cavaliers. 11 turnovers for Clemson. And that's a, a very big difference. You put your defense at such a disadvantage, and you know, said it earlier, but it bears repeating. You know, against Virginia, you have to get a shot every time down. If you don't get a shot, you are putting yourself in a huge hole. Scara at the line for Clemson. That's the third foul on Hunter. Diakite's on the bench with three. And Clemson will take every friendly bounce off the rim they can get right now. That's the first point for Clemson in the second half for someone other than Elijah Thomas. And it took over nine minutes as Isaiah Wilkins comes back in for Virginia. This is where they have, we talked about, a little bit more depth up front. Hunter on the bench. Wilkins comes back in. Diakite's got three fouls, but they've got Salt. They've really got four guys they could rotate very comfortably through the two front court spots. 
Right now, Oliver's on Kyle Guy. And a turnover. Pass. Surprising to see two turnovers in a row for Virginia. Clemson needs to take advantage of this. This is just a simple guard to guard pass. And Devin Hall just throws the ball right away. He's one of the, he might be the best assist to turnover guy in the ACC. Yeah, he was during the regular season. Great rebound by Salt off the mystery by DeVoe. Don't get that shot. And that was really deep with some pressure. And really early in the shot clock, too. Tonight, after North Carolina and Duke, part three here on ESPN at Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. We'll break down of the biggest game of the NBA. Houston is in Toronto tonight. A look at the best of 42 games that are taking place today and tonight in Champ Week. Key moments from Tigers' second round, not mentioned on the graphic, but implied more insight from Jay Billis. Yeah, I complained about not being top billed yesterday, and SportsCenter took me off altogether. <laughs> they're they're going to show me. I'm not allowed to complain. <laughs> you know what? Just so you're on the scout team for a while. Work, <laughs> work, work your way, way back, back up the ladder. You know, get on the line, run some sprints, show them something. Boy, that was a nice pull-up jumper by Nigel Johnson. He is so athletic and speedy. And he just brings an energy to the game that not everybody else does. Jack Salt with a steal. This is Virginia's rhythm. How, how do you inject some energy into the game? Good steal there. Just, that was a first turnover, I think, for Ty Jerome. He had seven assists and no turnovers before he threw that ball away. Not sure what the recipient was going to do with it. It's just throwing it into a crowd. And Jerome picks up the foul, his third. So Tony Bennett looking at the clock, nine and a half to go. He's got a number of players with three fouls. And the officials were told her at the monitor to see if there was no play on the ball, if that should be a flagrant one. So keep an eye on Jerome, the grab there of the right arm. Is that anything more than just a common foul? I don't think it should be, but I mean, we see those things all the time and they're not called. This is a bit unusual, but there's constant, you know, you see that all the time where people don't make a play on the ball, especially the end of games. But I think it was because it wasn't out in the open. That's a little more difficult. Okay, the decision has been made, and now we'll find out momentarily what it is. It'll they, either be a common foul or two shots in the ball. If it's taken this long, it probably will be something unusual. But if they don't bring the coaches together, usually it, it, they just move on. It's when they have to explain it to the coaches. Yeah. That's when you know there's a problem. So just a common foul. It's the seventh team foul on Virginia. That's why we'll see one and one at the free throw line. But the ruling is just a common foul. Nothing out of the ordinary. So Shelton Mitchell at the line for Clemson. And as you said, they can ill afford to miss any opportunities. They can't have turnovers. They've got to make free throws. They've got to take advantage of any crack uh, that that might show up in Virginia's game plan right now. But you just don't get that many opportunities. Well, they get an opportunity here now of attacking because they put usually Virginia's not the one and one this early. I mean, you got 932 left in regulation. And now every common foul, Clemson shooting free throws. So they, they have to really attack, especially off the dribble. And you see the pace, the slowest paced games in college basketball belong to Virginia because they take so much time off the clock on offense. They make you work hard and use a lot of time to get a good shot off when they're on defense. So as you've said, a 10-point game feels like a lot more than that in a Virginia game. The, uh, the clock really moves in a Cavs game. Yeah, and I think it's more because of the defense rather than the offense, because they look to score, but they're going to get the shot they want. That's a big one for Mitchell, and it's down to seven. Boy, a couple of shaky offensive possessions for Virginia, and all of a sudden Clemson's starting to feel like they've got a chance again. You know, the pace of this game was very much and still is in Virginia's favor. Now, Cle uh, Virginia can't afford on the other end to foul. So Clemson has to put Virginia in the, in the position to foul. 
Johnson through the legs off to Salt. He's got to get a shot up and he hits it. First bucket of the night for Jack Salt. Well, that is a big bucket for Virginia. They were down to about two seconds on the shot clock. Immediate double team. Great pass out. Mitchell short on the line drive three. Clemson can't afford to settle for jump shots. They have to drive the ball. Johnson off a screen, 12 to shoot. Long two, not there. Salt with the offensive rebound. He'll kick it back out. The discard on Scar just threw him out of the way and got the offensive rebound. Wilkins turns it over. And it is out of bounds to Clemson. What do we come back? Seven and a half to go. Virginia by nine. Post. Virginia's going to bring a double. They don't let it come back out on the ball side, so you're always looking opposite, and it's two on one. Devin Hall, and he's got to guard those two guys. And the most obvious pass is the diagonal pass. He takes it away. Kyle Guy is right there to score on the other end, and then you get a lot of Tony Bennett's out of this. Oh, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. I thought we were going to do the multiple Tony Bennett's. Because oh. they're playing. They're so sad in the truck. They had this great effect that they worked on for hours. All right, you got a whistle. Got a little, little extracurricular under the basket. There's the Tony Bennett. The multiple it Tony Bennett. <laughs> I gave it away. I buried the lead. <laughs> it, and I'm not sure there's a foul called under the basket, but there was something going on where Elijah Thomas and. Mamadi Diakite were going at it, and there might have been some contact up above the shoulders, but I'm not sure that a foul was actually called. They're just going to review it. So even if there was no foul call, they can go to the monitor to see if there was anything that warrants a flagrant. See, right under the basket there, you see Elijah Thomas and Diakite just rebounding a little bit. And yeah, and see, look. The right arm of Diakite. Yeah. And I made I made a big deal out of this last night, and because of the 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 way that we are dealing with blows to the head, you're seeing guys now fake it, and that was just there's going to be some contact, and who knows how the officials are going to rule on this thing, but that didn't look like anything to me, and I don't think there's a foul call. And no, my mistake. There was a foul. There call. was. Dave okay. Morris, our okay. statistician, telling us they did call a personal foul, a common foul on Diakite, on Diakite, which is his fourth. So now they're deciding whether to leave it as a common foul or upgrade it, if you will, to a, a flagrant one. And, and again, th this is not the, the official's fault. You know, they, they're, they're required by rule to do this because uh, this has been deemed a player safety issue. Above the shoulders, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, they don't even take it above the shoulders anymore. They, that used to be part of the rule where anything above the shoulders. But we've become so sensitive now, and, and in a lot of ways rightfully so. But, you know, there, there, there are certain things that are going to happen in the course of a game that I'm not sure this is all necessary. But that's the rule. So that's a policy issue, not the officials. Our second game tonight, North Carolina and Duke. Marvin Bagley the third, 33 points, 17 rebounds last night against Notre Dame, leading the Blue Devils against the Tar Heels in the rivalry round three. The second semifinal comes your way after this one tonight right here on ESPN. It's a small hallway for big guys to stretch in. Do we have a decision? And it looks like and it is a flagrant one so it'll be two free throws for Thomas and it's the fourth on Diakite as he makes his way back to the bench and the free throw disparity is pretty darn wide in this game now. And Clemson is going to have to continue to put Virginia in a position to foul. Virginia has 18 fouls. Clemson only has two. And that's two shots and the ball. So take a look underneath the basket. You know, look, there was contact there. Did it warrant that response? My, my take would be no. 
you know, the officials don't really feel like they have a choice. They have, they're mandated. They have to call that a, a flagrant one. I don't know whether they want to or not. I'm not a fan of it. I think a common foul would have been just fine there. So a big sequence as Reed lays it in. And all of a sudden, Clemson is back within five. Boy, and those, I'll tell you, those flagrant ones on that kind of, that kind of play has a huge impact on a basketball game. Huge. Very productive possession for Clemson. And now we got a foul on Gabe DeVoe. Marquise Reed, who has not had a very good game. One point up until now, driving the baseline. And when you drive the baseline against Virginia, you're going to get a basket. This whole defense is predicated on forcing middle. There is going to be no help if you go baseline. Boy, way too easy on the inbounds. Somehow Hunter just slipped right to the basket and laid it in. Let's go to Allison. Well, the message during the previous timeout for Clemson was we won the first two rounds in the second half. At that point, it was 16-16. Now it's actually an 18-16 advantage for Clemson. So they need him just to continue to fight, but they got to focus on getting the ball inside and rebounding. Every possession so big. Less than seven minutes to go. Nice turnaround by Thomas. Boy, that was a sweet move by Elijah Thomas, who started his career at Texas A&M. He was injured a, a little bit. He had a foot injury, but he came into the same class with Tyler Davis and DJ Ho. And of that three, uh, it, well, he, I'm not sure he wasn't the most talented, but Ho can really shoot it. Virginia led by double digits down to five right now as DeVoe commits another foul, just the fourth on the team. Well, because he caught the ball off the, the block, there was no double that came to Thomas, and he just spun right around Jack Salt and went off the glass with that left hand. That was a beautiful move by Elijah Thomas. Guy who's ACC all-defensive team, one of the better shot blockers in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson trying to pull off the upset and get to the championship game of the ACC tournament. They have closed to within five against the number one team, Virginia. Salt, shot clock running down. It'll go. Well, that's two moves on that side of the of the, the lane by Jack Salt when he's caught the ball. That was a, a very confident move and finish. Well, that was a good slip of the screen by Thomas. He was open. Reed taken away by Hall and he saves it. What a play by Devin Hall. What a play by Hall. They're like a boa constrictor. They get a hold of you and they yep. just squeeze the breath out of you. Shot clock down to five. Jerome Salt and another bucket. Salt set the screen and rolled right to the basket. Really good catch and finish. Three huge baskets here in the second half for the redshirt junior from New Zealand. Mitchell, no. Salt the rebound. Can't settle for jump shots. Clemson has an opportunity to get to the free throw line by being aggressive and attacking the defense. You take jump shots, you are letting Virginia off the hook. And that clock just keeps on ticking. Down to 425. Virginia up by nine with the ball. Deep one. Way off for Jerome again with the shot clock running down. Now take a look at this defense by Devin Hall. Just staying in front and taking it right away from Marquise Reed and having the presence of mind to save that ball and then salt with the screen and then slip in the screen and diving right to the baseline. Skara comes over, but can't stop him. That was a really, really nice sequence for Jack Saul. Really a couple times down. Over the top to Thomas. Missed it. It'll stay with Clemson, so they'll get another shot at it. But I man, that was off Thomas. So did Tony Bennett. Yeah, that was off Thomas. Cannot review it till you're in the final two minutes of the game. Semi-final number one. The big guys getting it done inside recently for Virginia. They're up by nine.
of a night for Theo Pinson last night. He's been playing the best basketball of his college career. And don't forget, over on ESPN, not here on ESPN2, on ESPN, you will see North Carolina and Duke about 25 minutes after the conclusion of this game. They will meet for the third time this season. For the 22nd time in the history of the ACC tournament, Duke leading 13-8. to They've won the last six. And it should be... All kinds of fun. The building is full. The building will be alive. And as you said a little bit earlier tonight, one of them's got to win, so that means it'll be 22 years in a row where at least one of Duke or North Carolina plays for the championship of the ACC tournament. It's just crazy. And Marquise Reed, that's the first jumper he's knocked down. He's now 2 of 10 on the game, 1 of 7 from three-point range. Maybe they'll get him going a little bit. It's now a two possession game with about three and a half to go. Little zone now for 1-3-1 one, one for Clemson. Give a different look to Virginia. Baseline, you're going to be able to get a shot in the corner because that's where Gabe DeVoe's got to go. And that's where Hall is, and he hits it from the corner. The corners are going to be wide open because DeVoe's got to run the baseline. Pretty nice no-look bounce pass from Jerome, who looked off his defender and then found Hall in the corner. Tough contested three, won't go for Reed. Well, after Reed got the last one to go, he's feeling pretty good about himself and then took a challenge one right over Jerome. That was a big turnaround. Sticking with the 1-3-1. Really need to attack the corners in this. Jerome to a wide-open Hall. He'll put it on the deck, kick it to Guy. Guy won't hesitate. Oh, what a screen by Jack Salt. When he screens you, you stay screened yeah. for a little while. If they had a screening award in college basketball, he might win it. Mitchell gets a good look. Got it. Or just getting the ball into the paint. He's collapsed that pack line a little bit. They bring a kick out. Sorry, Jay. They've been right there the last few minutes. Just one stop and make from really making this one interesting. Well, you have to have a stop here. Back to man to man. Hall's going to drive it. Salt's going to follow it. Well, when Thomas came over to block the shot, that opened up the offensive glass for Jack Salt. Eight big points all in the second half for Jack Saltz. DeVoe takes a bump and will head to the free throw line. Oftentimes when you have a shot blocker, when the shot blocker comes from the weak side, if you don't block it, that opens up the offensive glass. And Amir Sims unable to get the box out on Salt. So 149 to go. Thomas back. Heading back into the lane now for Clemson. Duke and North Carolina still to come over on ESPN in the second semifinal tonight. DeVoe coming off a 25-point effort last night against Boston College. Does not get the second to go. Some pressure. They got to get it over. Salt saves it to Guy. And now the problem is you got three guards who can handle the ball and three guards who can really make free throws. Shot clock at one. Wow. A kid not afraid to take tough shots. He's had a great floor game, just hasn't scored. And Ty Jerome, when Virginia needs a bucket to salt this thing away, just gives a little juke move, crossover, creates a little bit of space, and that's a two-point dagger right there. Now six points to go with his career-high ten assists. And only one turnover, also three steals. A great floor game for Ty Jerome, just not his best night shooting the ball. But boy, when the game's on the line, and nothing bothers Ty Jerome. No. Remember the shot he hit against Duke to win that game, the deep three in the, in the closing seconds of the game. 
and was very poised down the stretch against Louisville. There's just something about this team. A toughness, you mean? Well, they don't get rattled. Yeah. I mean, even when they're, they're, things aren't going well, you know, they rely on one another very effectively. They just don't, they don't get rattled. That's one reason why there, Isaiah Wilkins, one of, he's a great leader for this Virginia team. And Virginia's got good free throw shooters, even though only four team fouls for Clemson. So they're going to have to inbound the ball again. That doesn't put them on the line. Hunter's walking down as if there are going to be free throws. Everybody's assuming they're over the limit. But there haven't been that many fouls. It's just the 15 foul on Clemson. When it comes to free throw time, Jerome's 90%, Hall's 89, and Guy's 85. So what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Clemson is caught between a rock and a hard place right now. The old Cillin Charybdis. And no need to risk anything. Hall knows that. They don't turn it over. Tough to trap. Make their free throws. And a foul after 23 seconds ran during this possession. And again, it still won't put him at the line. That's number six. There's just not enough time. It's a three possession game. And the Virginia fans starting to sense it now. And there's number seven. So now they'll start the parade to the free throw line. It'll be the freshman DeAndre Hunter, and he's no slouch at 78%. Warming up here with the Barclays Center, the Duke Blue Devils getting ready to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. You can see that game not too long from now over on ESPN. It's like a yoga class. <laughs> always like the trash compactor from uh, the Star Wars movie it's it's like way too narrow for people that size Bagley was just sensational last night Grayson Allen knocked down five threes all early all in the first half of the game to help Duke against Notre Dame North Carolina was down 14 to nothing to Miami seven minutes into the game and won 82 65 Well, Marquise Reed has had a tough night. He's guarded ably all night long by Devin Hall. And instead of trying to get the ball to the rim, where you can perhaps get fouled, score with no time going off the clock, maybe set up a press, you, know, you miss a three, and it's essentially game over. Because Kyle Guy going to the free throw line, he's just about automatic from the, the stripe. Just about automatic from everywhere. Jay. You don't believe in that <laughs> announcer curse thing, do you? When you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer to think of it as karma more than a curse. Five point game. As Guy misses the front end, 26 seconds to go. Guy missed that free throw, but otherwise he's had a terrific night. Well, Kyle Guy is a, a great young player. And offensively, so fundamentally sound with his footwork. Got a quick release. His shot preparation is just outstanding. And he's a competitor, always moving. He's really improved as a defender. And he's got a great all around game. And seems to have fun out there. Absolutely. Recently so, engaged, too. That's right. He's had an eventful couple of years in Charlottesville, had a terrific freshman season. And is an even better player now as a sophomore, hoping to lead Virginia into the championship game against the winner of Duke and Carolina, the second game coming up. Uh, you and I have been lucky enough to do both Duke-Carolina games this year. What are you expecting in this one tonight? 
another fist fight. Uh, but I think you're going to have to see a, a much better Joel Berry than we've seen the last three games. Berry had 31 points against Miami, but since then he hasn't played nearly as well. He's three of 20 from three in his last three games and did not have a, nobody, it seemed like, except for Theo Pinson had a good game against right. Miami last night. But Carolina's averaged 32 three-point attempts in the two games that they played against Duke. 64 three-point attempts in those first two games. And they're going to have to shoot a much better percentage in this one than they did in the last one. One thing that we don't know for sure, we know there's some sort of an issue with Wendell Carter Jr.'s foot. We don't know how serious. Uh, we don't know. We assume until we hear otherwise, or maybe until they take the court, we assume he will play and he will start. But there is something going on with his foot. He was also hampered by foul trouble in last night's game, so only played about 17 minutes. Meanwhile, 25.9 to go. Virginia with the ball and a five-point lead. And they'll use a timeout. A really good job by Clemson to face guard and not let Virginia get a clean look. Well, we talked a lot about the guards, their ability to make shots, what Hunter means, what Wilkins means. How about maybe the unsung hero of Virginia wins this game and Jack Salt? Well, most of what Jack Salt has relied upon is great defense, rebounding, and setting screens to free up his teammates. And he always does a good job of setting screens, but this time he was screener scorer looking for his offense as soon as he would set a screen, rolling hard to the basket. I mean, you think Marquise Reed felt that screen? And then going to the offensive glass, tipping one in after Elijah Thomas went to block a shot. Nobody blocks out Jack Salt. And that is the definition of a bruiser. Second half, eight points, four of four from the field, eight rebounds. That's a, a really good effort from Jack Salt from New Zealand. Eight points, the most that he's had in a game since he had 10 December the 19th against Savannah State. Jerome to inbound again. There you go with the double-double announcer curse. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't over yet. And they'll use another timeout. So they've still got one left, but they've had to burn two, unable to get the ball in. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind not being able to call a timeout right after without any time coming off the clock after you call a timeout. You like the international yeah, rules? Yeah, force them to... I, agree. I tend to agree with that. Keep it moving. You don't see Tom Brady calling a timeout when there's a rush on, do you? <laughs> uh, the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels are anxious to go here. They want to keep it moving. Leo Pinson stressed out as always. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he a great kid? If, if there's a, a, a happier, looser, more at ease guy in college basketball, we haven't met him. Oh, yes, he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Theo knows we're, we're fighting over him that at some point down the road, whenever he stops being a player, we're fighting over him to, to come join us at the table. The problem is you want him to replace me and I want him to replace you. <laughs> Now they get it in. And a foul. They were one pass away from Isaiah Wilkins being alone under the bucket, but they'll head to the free throw line. Number four on DeVoe. And it'll be Hunter to the free throw line. Virginia has not made a free throw in this game. Now, they've only attempted four, but they've missed all of them. And I think the officials were checking maybe who the foul, who the free throw shooter should have been is just my guess. And it's going to be Hall. Brad Brownell's diagramming a play for a couple of players. The officials and are, Isaiah Wilkins is yeah, in his huddle. He's in the huddle. Now yeah. there's nothing illegal about that, but it's just a little odd. <laughs> no wonder they know what's coming. <laughs> Did we just discover the key to their defense? Virginia's really <laughs> smart. <laughs> Mr. Jefferson taught him well. <laughs> and Hall one of two 
Two possession game, 20 seconds to go. DeVoe, a crossover. Can't lay it in. But a foul is called on Hunter of Virginia. Isaiah Wilkins, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Brad Brown, I'll say what <laughs> And Brad's talking to him. <laughs> what do you think we should run, yeah. Isaiah? <laughs> That's funny. There is something about, yeah, their rivalries, but about the kind of the camaraderie that exists within a conference when everybody knows each other so well. I mean, Brad Brown now has been coaching against Isaiah Wilkins for four years. Uh, one of the unsung heroes, really, in the ACC, Isaiah Wilkins. And it's nice to see him get recognized this year as the ACC Defensive Player of the Year because he really is a, a tremendous defensive player and a, a great team defender as well as an individual defender. Amir Sims at the line for Clemson. If Clemson goes on to lose this game, they will wait and see where they're going and what their seed is and who they play on Sunday. They are clearly, safely, obviously, in the tournament. It'll be the first NCAA berth for the Tigers since 2011. Joey Brackett's prior to action today. Jay had him at a five seed, and even though they don't have Grantham, I think they have shown people, even after the Grantham injury, they're going to be a tough out. This is a good basketball team. With Grantham, I thought they were a second weekend team. Immediate foul will send Hall back to the line. That'll be the fifth on DeVoe. That's his fifth foul. Tenth team foul. Got to be tough. You've been in this situation, I'm sure, countless times. You're the Tar Heels or the Blue Devils, and they are literally standing in the tunnel when you play the second game in a tournament situation. You're raring to go, and now you got to stand there for 15, 20 minutes with all of this walking up and down on all the free throws. Yeah, the hardest part is when there's overtime. Yeah, and you have to you have to dial it back a little bit. You know, you're ready to get rolling, and but that's that's part of the fun of the tournament too. Right, is you're all keyed up to come out, and the players pass each other. It's really a that's one of the great things about the ACC tournament. I mean, this thing has been. As Keith Jackson used to say, essentially the granddaddy of them all of, of conference tournaments. When you played nine teams? Eight teams. Eight teams, yep. Italy. Yep. Everybody played yeah. on Friday. It was a three-day three -day tournament. Yeah, ended on Sunday. Reed, a little bit short. Ball's loose. Out of bounds off Guy. And one final possession for Clemson, but just 1.2 to go. No foul, says Tony Bennett. Hands high. And a lot of noise from... A really good number of fans who have come from Charlottesville and elsewhere, maybe alums who live here in the greater New York area. This is the number one team in the nation. And they are on to the championship game. A lot of respect between those two coaches. Virginia wins again. They go to 30 and 2, and they'll take on the winner of our next semifinal that you can see over on ESPN about 20 minutes from now. North Carolina and Duke are coming your way shortly from the New York Life ACC tournament.